So the message is very clear. We take the lead and we galvanise others to follow. It's pretty clear that we are going to be committing some of our jets. My debate, my question tonight is, are we doing the right thing or risking a dangerous level of escalation? Give me your thoughts, please, Farage at GBNews.UK. I'm joined by Con Coughlin, Defence Editor of the Daily Telegraph, and Henry Bolton, of course, uh, international security expert and border control man. Uh, let's begin, Con, with you. You were saying quite clearly the other day that you felt NATO's response ought to be stronger, that perhaps even Boris Johnson play a bigger role on the world stage. Are you happy that we're now about to move, it would seem, to be sending combat jets to Ukraine? Well, yes, I, I do think very strongly we should give Ukraine all the help we can. Ukraine has the right under the UN Charter to get its allies to provide military equipment. I think so long as British pilots aren't flying British jets against Russia, um, we avoid the escalation. I mean, the Russians have been escalating from day one. Um, and, you know, th they are clearly determined to continue this war. And Ukraine needs to have more equipment to prevail. And I think it's in the West's interest that Ukraine sees off this Russian threat. So anything we can do to help the Ukrainians, I do support. So we give artillery kit, we give anti-aircraft kit, we give Correct. tanks, Correct. We, now, we now give planes. Why not men if that's their next request? Well, that, that I think, is the red line for me. That's I, the red line? That's the red line for me. And are you I worried mean, about the amount of equipment we're sending? No, I think... The, the, it, so long as it, the equipment is used by the Ukrainian military, All right. that, that is the big difference. And I think give them as much kit as they need. Um, I mean, th this is a very important war f in terms of the you know, long-term Western security. If we let Russia get away with this, there will be profound implications for our security and NATO security further down the line. Henry Bolton, you know, Boris wants to send every piece of kit we've got. Surely we have to keep something in reserve, don't we, in a very uncertain world? I mean, I agree with Con. We, we cannot allow Putin to win this war. The implications would be massive for European security. And I actually believe that uh, if Putin is allowed to consolidate on U U Ukrainian territory, that's not the end of it. And I think inevitably, if he's not pushed out of Ukraine in this war, then we will see a later war which will inevitably be a Putin taking on NATO. And that will be a far... In, in terms of but blood and treasure... Be, wouldn't but, he be insane to do that? Uh, not if he's got... Because it, not if he's got the West brokering a peace, peace agreement that allows him to present this as victory to the Russian people. Now, but to answer your question, I, you know, it, well, first of all, to prevent Putin winning this war, the Ukrainians need to have help. We're in a consolidation and regrouping phase at the moment in expectation on both sides of offensive operations coming in, in the next couple of months. Some kind of spring offensive. Yeah, yeah, indeed. And both both sides are now incorporating the lessons learned from the first war, a year of war to regroup, reorganise, rearm, re-equip, retrain and get out there so that they're ready to meet each other's offensives and, la and launch their own in the coming months. Now, um, to meet those Russian offensives, then the Ukrainians are going to need significant help. And that's why the timing of this is important. What I worry about is that, yes, there is a risk. I think the risk of, of taking on Putin through Ukraine now is less than doing nothing, a great deal less. It would be a lot more right, risky. Well, some agreement, not, there's but, some agreement but, between but the two of you there. But the danger is that if we provide him with all the kit without backfilling our own, mm. then we will leave ourselves naked if this war does and, escalate and that was into point, another geographical And that dimension. was a point that Labour's Shadow Defence yeah. Secretary John Healy was making yesterday. I thought it was quite an interesting intervention politically by him. Con, I keep reading stuff in the press. I keep hearing Boris saying, when we beat Putin, we must beat Putin, we will beat Putin. Uh, whenever uh, the Russian army moved back, you know, behind the Dnieper River or whatever, it's presented as a huge withdrawal. Uh, the Ukrainians are taking incurs on. I mean, to read the British press, you would think the Ukrainians are winning this war hands down. Uh, actually, the situation is a lot more complex than that. Isn't the truth of this that this could go on for years? That's how it looks to me at the moment. Yeah. Um, the Ukrainians had a good end of year last year, and they took some important strategic positions in the north and the south. Um, but when you look at the map, 
they've reclaimed about 10% of the territory that the Russians took way back in 2014. Um, they're nowhere near retaking Crimea. And so when the Ukrainians say they're going to fight until they reclaim every bit of Ukrainian soil, you, you do wonder whether that's realistic. And given the divisions within the NATO alliance, I'm not sure there's much support for that Ukrainian position within the NATO well, alliance. this is what I think. I mean, Henry Bolton, at some point, doesn't everybody have to accept that Crimea is not going back to Ukraine? Well, I think Crimea... Well, there needs to be a peace settlement I mean, of some Connor's kind. Connor's just debated. implied that Crimea is some way down the road before we can look at that. I think the, the first thing is what I would call the, the land bridge, the Crimean land bridge from Russia down to Crimea on the north Black Sea coast. Now, can the Russians hold that? The, the Ukra if they can hold that, then Ukraine is solid. Uh, sorry, Crimea is solid. Mm. If the Ukrainians can break through that at some point... Uh, in, in the coming year or whenever to the Black Sea coast, then it becomes less, difficult, uh, less easy for the Russians to, to hold, hold on, to Ukraine, on to Crimea. I, I think, you know, what we're seeing, I mean, if you, if you, I'm going to use the analogy of World War II because I think in terms of the future of Europe's security laydown, and, and Zelensky today referred to future European security architecture, I don't think he's wrong. I mean, this war is going to define what happens for decades security-wise in, in Europe go, going forward. And I think well, doesn't it really show that Europe itself is very disunited? Oh, indeed. I mean, it, you know, it, now it's not, we haven't got the time now to talk about the origins of this war and the energy side of it and the gas sort of fields and so on involved. But it's a major, if we look at that, then indeed, you know, the, the, the part of the, the reason why Putin, I think, thought he could get away with this was lack of consensus within the European continent um, relating to what, you know, what sort of reaction mm. there the should be. But I think that um, you know, this... I'm going to use the analogy of World War II because I don't think it's inappropriate. Um, we've got much the same sort of approach from Russians as we had from Nazi Germany in terms of the, uh, you know, the, the way they've approached this. But um, 1940, we were very much on the back foot. We were begging the United States for support and help. Thank God the United States provided it. <coughs> Ukraine will be saying much the same thing now about the Allies providing Ukraine okay. with equipment. And we've got to... But we never had that knowledge as to how it's going to pan out. It was risky, but we couldn't afford to lose. No, of course, of and course. I, and that's where we are now. I, th I, I agree with Con entirely. This is going to be a long war. Well, and anybody who says otherwise... Is wrong. No, I'm, I'm, I, I'm convinced of that. There are implications for our defence policy going forward. As and a I think much of the British press has been irresponsible, frankly, in the yeah. way that it's been saying. Not the Daily Telegraph. No, 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 no. Fine, <laughs> but I think much of it has. Final quick thought, Con, if I may. If you are right, and, and where we—I mean, I'm worried—we're getting deeper and deeper into this, perhaps more than you are. But where we are all agreed is this is going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, more and more equipment is going to be demanded. Isn't it time? that we had a sharp, short increase in defence spending in this country? Undoubtedly. I mean, we have to. I mean, the, the fact we've sent 14 challengers and the army's saying that it's on its knees in terms of military capability. I mean, Boris says send 100 British warplanes. We've only got 100 British warplanes. Exactly. So th th that's nonsense. And, of course, there's a lot of Boris grandstanding going on mm. with, with Rishi. Um, in terms of the conflict, I mean, the, the one factor we haven't discussed tonight is just how long can Russia sustain this mm -hmm. conflict? And, you know, you look at the Russian economy, you look at the, the losses in men and equipment the Russians mm. have suffered. Mm. This is a very brittle force. And, and you know, whether they've m mobilised 500,000 conscripts or not... Which is what we believe. Which is what we're being told, and that, that's the Russian propaganda. But are they combat ready? Are they really going to make a difference? And if, if they just use them in, in a sort of First World War mm. slaughterhouse mm. Um, tactic, mm. then that's not going to last for very long. And, and I think, you know, if, if the Ukrainians can sustain the gains they made at the end of last year through to the summer... Putin will be in trouble. I mean, one of the things Final here is that in, in, in major conflicts of this sort, it has been proven time and time again that the side with the deepest, the most depth economically survives. Now, Ukraine doesn't have it alone. It needs the support of its allies to do that. And General Richard Sheriff said the British government has not been listening. It needs to listen now. Well, we I need think... to backfill the equipment yeah, that we're I, providing. I think that's the one point that comes out more clearly mm -hmm. to me than anything from this, is we need a very rapid increase in defence procurement. Very rapid in Indeed.